Okay, a while back we did a paint, no, coatings video, industrial coatings video. We had an industrial coatings expert in here that talked about that. If you want to go back and see that video first, because the cool thing is he's back and he brought his equipment. So meet Eric Montague, professional coatings inspector. Wow. Oh God, I have a painted boat sitting out there. <laughs> this is tense, all right? Cause it's like, you know, I can slap paint on it. It's like, let's go. And it's like, but now we're gonna test that shit out there, I think. Well, we'll. See if I did a good job. We'll find something positive to say. <laughs> we, we better find the truth. Cause it's better, easier to paint here than it is in the oceans. Let's see. First thing we do, calibrate the equipment. Yeah, so calibration, you have these little standards, known standards, and they're thicknesses of plastic at various thicknesses, of course. And we've set up for the middle one. The middle one's 38.4 mils. So you start off by calibrating to something that you think is going to in the right range so you get the, yeah, yeah so in it's the more ballpark. accurate. Yep, so I've done that. Wait a minute, do I get to make a guess about what I think it is? Sure. All right, let me think. That's it? That's all you do? It's pretty anticlimactic. Does it, it? Does it Just average? like everyone's life. Yeah. <laughs> Does it average the readings? It can. You're just checking each one. All right. All right. So here, let's start back here, and I'll I'll call them out as I read them. Okay. Do it. Twenty-eight eight. I like that. Twenty-nine four. Well, no, wait a minute. Now, it's not a really smooth surface. So, does it read from the paint, or does so it read the, from the tip? It's touching. So that transducer has a point. So it's based on that diameter. So yeah, it's, and then as Okay, so within it, that area, okay, yeah. from that transducer point. Yep. So a, a little flex, a little wave or bump in the paint right. can make a difference. Right, so that's 25.6. So uh, the SBC says that for each area you test, there needs to be three tests within an inch and a half area. Right, so you average those three for a reading, and then it's five areas for every 10 square meters, I think it is. Right. You know, I'm not actually a coating tester. I'm usually the guy that comes in when there's a coating failure. Yeah. And I'm usually looking at the steel behind it. All right. So, so it's... So I, I play with this kind of stuff, but I mean, there are guys that are, are nice coating guys where all they deal with is it's just, just the coating. Right. And I mean, those guys, those guys are uber coating geeks. Those right. nice guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> me, not, I, I'm looking at the you're, steel You're below. telling me you're an amateur geek coating guy? Oh yeah, I'm an amateur oh, yes, coating yeah, geek. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I can introduce you to these nice level three guys and wow. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go around and do sure. a few more and just see how thin we actually get. So here's an interesting thing. So yeah. that's, that's a reading of 23.5 at right. that spot. Right. If I move over the diameter of the transducer, yeah, 24.6. Okay. And move again, 24.0. Oh. Now that I shot twice because it's a weld. 47.3. Well yeah. Now I expect that because I came over here and I shot the welds all separate just to make sure. So 39.8. Yeah. It's down low. It's 39. Easy to reach. You're getting 35. close to the weld. 31, 26, okay. 28. What do you think? I I love it. You've got a fairly uniform coating. That's the sprayer. I don't think the roller would, you know, we all go up and see what the roller did. 29, let's do that. Okay. Smart. I kept reaching over there and right touching. Right there. 42, 33, 33, 38, 40. 40, 41. You know what we did? We sprayed it again, 48. Yeah. We sprayed it again after we rolled it twice. So we're not, so it's, 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 it's definitely has enough. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. And I still don't think because you did, because you did it in multiple layers, I still don't think it's so thick. You have to worry about it breaking. That should be a lot thinner there. So let's see, we got, we got uh, the, Six, four, six mils, maybe from the, let's say four from the, uh, uh, the zinc primer. Okay. And then I got, now right up against the edge, I paint twice because it's Sure, you got your stripe coat, right? So we need the, the it'll be thinner out here. And I think I got, this is Amber Lock 2, I think I got uh, six to eight. So I got at least 10. Eight and a half. Seven seven. Alright, that's kind of thin for me. Nine nine. 
10 9. Now remember, I I calibrated at 38, so this yes. measurement's probably off because I'm But it's close. It's close. Yeah. It's probably so. thicker than that. I, I would I would I would guess right. that it's thicker well, than ten, that. 10 is what my guess, so you're, you're under, we're a little under 10. So just looking at it, I would say but it was try less it, than try it along the side, I think it'll be thicker. A little closer to that bite. And see what are you it's there? saying six and eight, seven, six and a half. Okay, maybe I didn't recoat that. Seven. Right there. Oh, 12. Well, it's because I'm, I'm okay, but I'm spraying underneath that pipe from both sides. Right. So. 10, 12, 9, 4. Okay. 8, 8. So, that, look, just looking at it, Doug, yeah. because it's not filling in, I would say that's probably pretty close. Um, less than 15 mils, just looking at it. Right. Which, that's what it's telling us, so I yeah. believe it. Well, that coal, it doesn't build up like that coal tar does. That stuff it goes, does not. They, the coal tar, they say you can put it on up to 20 mils thick in one pass. In one pass? Yeah. And I didn't three do or that. four layers of yeah, that. Yeah, you See, get a lot of paint. No. You know, they make some of those products, they call them high builds. Oh, that is. It's, yeah. it's coal tar HB, that HB high build. They have some products out there that, that are designed for the maritime industry yeah. where they're actually, they were actually formulated for spraying on the prop in high build applications so they can build it up almost a quarter inch thick. So they can go back while it's still soft and profile the really? prop flat. Fair the prop, but it's a paint that's designed to go on that thick. Heavy, heavy, 100% solids the, with yeah. additives. If you put a paint on that's not designed to go that thick, oh yeah, it just come off. It How does it come off? off? Does it crack or does it? It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. When they when they when they beach those boats in India or wherever else, they're gonna break those ships. That coating's still on there. <laughs> okay. No, my question here is, what if we? What if you take a paint like uh, Amarlock 2 and you put it on too heavy? What's it gonna do? Well, uh, sooner or later, it would have a hard time staying bonded. So really, it, it doesn't it, crack; it just lets go of the subsurface. No, that's what it would do. Is it would oh, okay. it would become so it would it would become so thick it's inflexible, and then as right. the base metal flexes, it would either crack or it would pop off. It depends on uh, both the substrate and the coating. Um, okay, this so instance it, I had a place of, where the boat hull flexes. It'd be important not to have it too thick, right? Right, and and that's so your your so your hole is built with quarter inch thick plate. Yeah, um, you know. Uh, but it depends on some of the other things, like where is it going to hit the waves, and sure, how's sure. how's that plate going to oil? Uh, I can, can show you some examples from last week where the floor is a quarter inch carbon steel, just like the hull of your boat. Right, and the floor of this tank was supported in between I beams. The floor deformed in between, betwixt the supports, yeah, and the coating flexed with it and did not crack. Okay. Um, I would expect that from any industrial coating. But I can also show you an example in the same situation where the coating was so thin it did crack and then because it had a path to the steel Got behind uh, it. It got behind it and super accelerated corrosion. Happened. So it doesn't matter too thick, too thin. You want to avoid both of them. Correct. Both are evils. Right. Both I need to go look at my Marilock and see what they uh, actually said. Marilock has a huge range. And remember, oh. that's what they're willing to stand behind. It usually will operate way outside Side of that of, range. That's what they're guaranteeing. Right. You know what it can do is fat. You know areas below and above that range. Remember, they understand that this stuff has to tolerate the average person applying it huh. with, the, with the average effort. That's us. Yeah, well. We're average. We, we'd like to say that, well. Or we hope we're average. I, I can I'll, tell you from experience, you guys are way above average. Oh, that's, that's scary. <laughs> we don't do this for a living. Well, what's scary is the kind of effort I see with people who do. Yeah, this you have an example of that for us, don't you? I do. I have some. Sure. In our society, we we tend to refer to things as porn, where where it's sensational, um, and in the inspection business, we call it inspection porn, where it's so cool and so neat to look at that it's porn for us inspectors. <laughs> and I'm known in the industry as having all kinds of examples of geeky inspection failures. That's you. Yeah, that's me. Will it work on the non-skid? Well, I, 
You know, it yeah. should. I mean, we've got a good metal below it. What you're going to say, 60? Uh, I would say north of 65, maybe 100. <laughs> well, that's some of the row. 94. Yeah, good guess. 88. 78. Let's see, find some thin spots. 48. Yeah, that makes sense. You're, when you get down in the valleys. 63. 62. Let's see if I can hit a 103. Yeah, the flatted areas. Yeah, we almost put it on like a, you know, trialed on knockdown stucco. And what's cool about this stuff is this stuff is designed to flex so much, it'll never pop off. Well, that's good to hear. It, uh, as long as there's not an incompatibility between the three layers of coatings, you're never going to have a No, on PPG this stuff. made sure and single source made sure that the compatibilities are right. Yeah, and, and remember, that's what they're willing to stand behind. These yeah. stuff will tolerate extremes beyond that. That's just right. what they're willing to support. You know, it's even done real well in our wooden gangplank. And I don't think it, they say anywhere you use it, this. Yeah, I mean, wood. it wasn't designed for that, but it it, it has such an, a good adhesion yeah. quality that, yeah, un, until there's oil behind the wood or the wood itself starts to fail, well, it's I, never going to lose. I think it's water that gets in, soaks up, and gets behind it. It's Some wood. type of intrusion. Yeah, yeah. Yep, whether yeah. it's water or oil. Well, or, we didn't even work on the end, so it's, it's actually up where the board's cut. And I didn't do anything for the end of the board, so it's, yeah. it's not sealed. You're going to find stuff like this actually gets worn off, where you've yeah. got cables and chains actually wearing yeah. grooves in this. Yeah, well, that's just wear and tear. We and expect that. that's not going to happen up here. I mean, it'll happen up there on the right. Ford. But uh, back in here, yeah. The kind of product, if it wasn't so expensive, would be nice to put along the side where you're going to be throwing a, a, a chain or some other piece of equipment. That's an interesting idea. That well, I mean, it's a really expensive rub guard. <laughs> well, not if you use it on small areas. Right, right, on small areas. Yeah. And and another problem is is it, this is the color. So I mean, you can paint on top of it, but this yeah, is the I'm not color. Gonna, I'm not going to get too. You know, we're not that boat. You know, like people ask me, are you going to paint the pilot house back there? It's like you've got yeah, wood and aluminum. cabinetry. You're yeah. almost that boat. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> yeah, it's true. We're, we get in between those two places. Yeah, like, you're running betwixt the line. Yeah, if you think we're like a fishing boat, you need to go on a fishing boat. It's I've been on those fishing yeah, boats. Like, you know, if they have paneling on the wall, I mean, it's plywood, it, it's pretty classy. Yeah. yeah well, it would t should be about 10, too. 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, okay. 6-4. Ooh. 5-2. Oh. 11. <laughs> I'm up against the... Maybe it was a bug that code. died there. Mm, no. no. But remember, I still calibrated at 30, so going this thin, it's going to have an error. You know what the deal is? I... I sprayed the, uh, the zinc on with a air gun, and so I know that went on thin. Yeah. 25. In the stripe coat. Yeah, 25. 25 yeah. one. Well, I'm glad it's thick around the wheels, because that's the part that always seems to rust, isn't it? Well, so, so what I find in the industry is anywhere there's a rough surface, so a weld, a transition, a, a shape change, those are always areas that, that flex differently than the rest of an object. And because of that, um, if there's going to be a failure, it's either going to be right next to there or in there. Either because it's too stiff or it's because it's flexing right at the edge before it gets to that transition. Right. I've got plenty of photographs in tanks where, you know, the weld is rigid up against the shell and floor, but where the floor is moving, right there where the bending moment happens, it cracks the coating. And when there's a failure in that bond, yeah. That's where the corrosion happens. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, anytime there's an intrusion, that's, you know, yeah. that's where your corrosion is going to happen. And that makes sense because these panels flex, but it's going to be stiff right there where the braces are. Right, and it's just yeah. a matter of, I mean, you know, the, the kind of distortion I'm talking about, we're talking about deflections of, you know, half an inch or more. We've hit a big wave to get a half inch deflection. Yeah, if you get that kind of deflection, you've got other problems first. Yeah, well... <laughs> the neat thing about this kind of coating is this kind of coating you know you can you can put a, a, a you know one of those scotch bright or sand pads on a grinder knock that area down you know give it some tooth blend it back so that there's a nice transition between the edge instead of a broken edge of a coating where it cracked or, right. or popped off you blend that back to like a five to one ten to one transition okay. has nice tooth so if you're doing a repair do you want to feather the side of that repair area? Yes, and you want to feather it as much as you can tolerate. 
How do you mean by that? So I, I can show you examples of where a coating has failed and there's literally a step, right. a visible step in the coating, you know, 20 mil, 30 mil step in the coating between the the existing coating and the repair error that needs to be made. So you want to see a couple inches? Yeah, uh, and the more the better. I mean, there's a point of diminishing return, right. but, but uh, you know, industry standard for any transition is like 3 to 1 or 5 to 1. So you figure on a coating you'd want double or triple of that but you know a 15 to 1 transition ratio we're still talking about less than an inch of transition area right you know so yeah you say half an inch to an inch of transition to feather that back that's still going to give you a nice enough area to 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 feather that back and still have an adequate adhesion zone uh you know, you, you hit that with a tiger paw or some other type of sanding pad and then uh, wipe it with some, you know, as long as you're not California MEK <laughs> <laughs> or some other nice degreaser yeah. to get it nice and clean, get all the dust off, and then reapply it. Well, you made a real strong point about that degreasing thing, too, when you are here the first time. Yeah. Remember, but anyway, one of those visits. One of those visits, you made a real strong point. Degreaser. Oil is your worst enemy. I can show you some examples of a tank I've seen recently where they cleaned it real well, probably, you know, beyond what I needed to inspect, but it's still not cleaned, it's still not degreased to the point where I would feel comfortable for a recoat. Right. And, and that's, especially in oil and gas, you know, in a boat you're just try, trying to get it uh, salt free and dry, but then they also need to get it degreased. Well, the thing to me that, I, that something I hadn't heard before was all the oil that the air compressor uses. Yeah, so in your engine room, uh, anywhere, you know, anywhere there's going to be oil used. So your engine room, anywhere there's going to be an oil compressor, somewhere where you change the oil on a welding machine. Right. That you know, any any time there's oil on a coating. You know, I mean, they have different levels of permeability. You know, how much can the oil soak in? Rest assured, there's always going to be some permeability. And a lot of times, when people try to remove that, all they're doing is smearing it. Right. You're contaminating more, more area. area. And, and, and if you're talking about abrading it, you know, with sandblasting, now you're talking about impingement. So you take, you, your thing is remove the oils first you, you've before got, you yeah. do anything, yeah. do, before you do the feathering work that you're going to do. Right, and if that means you need to use a degreaser, either a chemical or a, or a caustic based degreaser, yeah. get that grease cut. Right. Get it, you know, get it, get all the debris removed, then cut that oil with something, you know. I mean, MEK works wonderful, but it's a horrible substance to carry well, around. Yeah. But there's other stuff out there. How about and, and, acetone? Uh, acetone works. Uh, acetones are pretty, uh, pretty middle of the road results. Right. Caustics work, you know, there's caustic based. Uh, there's lots of degreasers out there sure. on the market. I mean, even Simple Green or or that or that and purple Biotech stuff. 99. Yeah. I mean, 409 cleaner. Any yeah. any any degreasing solution will work. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't need to be industrial strength, but I mean, soap and water will do it given enough time and effort. It, it works off magnetics. So, really? Yeah. So you've got a known standard and basically does it work on wood if it works off magnetics um no no uh, no. Yeah. no it has to it can work on ferrous and i don't know if this one will work on non-ferrous some of them will some of them won't. i mean they've got some neat testers this is actually an old quite an older model right and, and most of them now are don't even have detachable probes it's all built into one little thing they've got oh, a you just walk up and oh yeah oh, really oh yeah, they, yeah. They're, they're you now, got an app for your phone for it too the new ones do <laughs> yeah, it'll auto generate a report oh so oh, nice a, a lot of these standards you know you need to take a minimum of three readings in any one area and then f a minimum of five area uh, five sets of readings in an area to be an adequate inspection so a lot of times it'll also prompt you you need another reading <laughs> oh really and then you need another set of readings and then okay uh, there's also for the uh, SPCC the reading is allowed to be 20% under and 20% over if you get readings that are outside those areas you need to do additional inspection and then you need to isolate the area that's that's either too thin or too thick and and the new ones will prompt you in all of that and yeah. they're pretty fancy this is almost too nice for a work boat yeah it is i know i got thin paint anywhere it's here i need to get bark with one to build a tool there we go 
this is the thin spots if I got any in here because this is no primer this is just uh, air marilock 2 sprayed on okay. with an air sprayer with one coat so I'm thinking if I got three I'm happy turn the probe around nine ten Jesus eleven twelve okay Nine. Here. Can I use it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just try it. Just uh, push, push to flat contact. And that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. There's not a button on the back. Not a button at all. Button nope. there. It, it automatically works. Five. Four, three. Yeah. Three, see. Six. Okay. So I'm okay. Six, two. Five. Cool. So what I like is the places that are thin are the places I knew were thin. <laughs> Well, it reinforces, it reinforces what you already knew. What I already knew. But yeah, so it feels does feel better knowing that the machine knows what I know. We know, yeah. We're, we that I, from I'm, empirical to quantitative. Yes, it's nice to stepping from what you imagine is right to what is proven right. A lot of my business is proving what I already know. <laughs> yeah, true. You can show us that too, can't you? <laughs> I can. That one's even even more intuitive and less or and the next gadget yeah the next gadget so what do you when you call when you say when you call, say somebody to go to the truck what do you tell them to go get the mlo gauge mlo yep tell me again what that stands for uh coating tester <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is an example of a repair we could have done better because yep. I got this, you can see the edge. We didn't feather it before we painted it again. You did this? I did this. We, you burned my paint off? I did. Remember, oh, we geez. put the angle iron support yeah. on this yeah, when, the, we, built the, when we built back the, the, wall. the decks. Yeah. So, yeah, I burnt that. I, I, I personally burnt that. Son um, of a bitch. But the neat thing about it is, notice we don't have any air bubbles or solvent. You bolt. think, yeah, so you think this example you saw the other day was solvent was used to clean it and it got underneath the paint because they didn't take off all the paint they was to do this. But next time, if I don't know, I can sand that down a couple inches out, feather it in real nice before I shoot it. The neat thing about this, Doug, is we can actually holiday test this area. Okay, to see if, see if I screwed it up. Well, to see if there are any voids that go all the way to the to base the metal. metal yeah. The bristles from the brush coming off and creating a wick. Right. We talked about yeah. that. Um, and, and I made the comment that the chances of those two holes ever lining up. Right, yeah, that's how I do remember that. Right? Yeah. Um, I've had guys chide me about that. That, that you know, that's, that's a very real possibility. It's only a possibility if the coating is put on in a single layer. Right. No coating manufacturer says put on just one coat. Right. There are some that are designed to do it all in one coat. But everyone realizes one coat over bare metal means any defect goes, goes straight, straight to, to metal. metal. Which means if you put it on in two or three layers, so on this boat, you've got a galvanized layer, mm -hmm. then you've got, you know... Yeah. Uh, the, in here, it's, it's coal tar. Coal tar. Well, no, you had the surface prep before that. Well, it was the rust doctor. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, converter. So, so you have the rust converter, yeah, and which, then you've got the coal tar. So, yeah. now, so now we're talking about three layers. Right? So no, no, no primer. In here. Oh, no primer. That's right. This is so just, here it's just, just the rust doctor tar. and then the coal tar. Yeah. And so what we're So that's two layers. Yeah. Um, on the outside of the boat. Oh, it's did, a lot more than that. So did you have the rust doctor you, on it? No, we didn't use rust so, doctor out you, there. But you so had there galvanized. we blasted. Right. So you, so you have a so you have a sand blast. And then we have the galvanized primer. Well, let's go through the steps though. So you sand blasted. Sand blast, yeah. Then you rinsed. And then we degreased. Then you degreased. And we rinsed again. And then you rinsed again. And we with, might have used hole with hole tight. tight. Yeah, if, if to cut the flashlight. So there's if, four steps already. Yeah. And then you've got a zinc galvanized coating. Yeah. And then you've got. At least got, one. And then you've got a base coat. Well, we of, got the impermeable coat, which would have been the, the, the ammer lock. Oh, so you put an ammer lock on. Yeah. And then you put on and the And then we put on coal tar. Epoxy. Epoxy. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, that's a step up. Yeah. And, and then we'll put on one more coal tar, and then we'll put on our anti-foul. Yeah. So, so we got two more coats of paint to That's an out entire there. system. Right, yeah. And that means even if you did have an individual holiday in any of those coats, they still have to have 
a holiday in the coat that's on top of that one for it to fail all the way to base metal. Right. So short of running into a floating container. Right. Or Which we'll do. Well, I hope. If we get on patches. Well, and that's the neat thing about this process is, you know, you've got a flat a flat bottom keel. You find any shallow spot yeah. with enough swing in the tide. Right. You swing out. You, you you wash it off so you're salt free. Let it dry or or force it to dry. Take a, a, a portable grinder or 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 even a hand file. Abrade that surface back to a decent profile. Something that doesn't have a transition that's that's so abrupt. Right. Mix up a coating to patch it up. Patch that area, force it to dry, or let it to dry naturally, depending on what you have time for. Yeah. Um, you know, most of these coatings are designed to be force cured. The post cure, uh, a lot of times they're called. That's what we're doing in the back um, cabin today. We got that heater back there to make some paint go off. Yeah, most of them are designed so that if you get them above 120 degrees, they accelerate the cure. Yeah. So, and and most of them will tolerate a. a well, they they say on the label they like 90 most of the time. Oh, it, it varies from 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 coating to coating. Yeah. But the idea is they all have a post cure, um, a recommendation. Right. So you can force something to cure real fast if the tide's coming in. Pull out a weed burner or, you yeah, know, maybe a hot air blower and yeah, and, air gun. You know make it skin over well enough that it's dry before it gets wet right it'll still be an adequate repair cool hey talk to me about this i got these pipes down here what do you guys do you wrap them so it's, this is just steel right it's just steel and and this one here is gonna move yeah and it's gonna abrade well in the coating i'm planning on heating it here and bending it up and bending it up to get it off the floor right there because it, it is touching the floor right it there. needs a spacer or an isolator i can do that slip a piece of plastic underneath yeah that's no problem yeah cutting board um they need to be coated with something yeah i know it's kind of the question um and prep to some level you can't sandblast much in there so in, in industrial situations a lot of times what they'll do is they will take a pad of scotch bright yeah and then rough up the surface with scotch bright mm -hmm. and then apply a coating with either a brush or one of those really small diameter rollers okay in the industry they use those for pipe a lot okay well we can do that thanks yeah. appreciate it that's that's I, and 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 something i would want to pay particular attention to is i want to see some type of of anti-corrosion in or corrosion inhibitor right here at the um, threads really? because that that's is the, the that's the part we're going to worry about most and because it's cut threads you've got a what lot kind of, of corrosion inhibitor are you thinking of um like a are you thinking about like a rust doctor type thing no i was thinking it? something low tech like grease oh <laughs> So paint first, and then come back and hit those joints with some grease. Yeah, yeah, something nice and thick that'll stay there. Yeah. Even in the tropic heat, it won't melt off. Oh yeah, well. Um, you know the stuff that's on there is not bad. It's that pipe dope, you know. You know pipe dope's great, but it's not it's not consistent and it's not thick. Okay. Uh, you know, in the old days, they used to use a well, Vaseline tar? type a tar. Uh, a Vaseline type product uh, was real common. They even made some products that were designed to be painted over top of. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. um, All right, we'll find something to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Um, right. A lot of times in, in tanks, a threaded hole for like a telltale hole, they'll fill full of grease. Um, in the old days, they used to use axle grease. Now they just, you know, pump it full with a, with a, with a grease gun mm -hmm. and then paint over top of it. And what's hilarious is hmm. a lot of times the coating will bridge that spot and coat it over. Weird. Yep. Um, a lot of times I'll also see an earplug. <laughs> Someone will pick up a disposable earplug and stick it in the hole, let it expand, and then just paint over the foam earplug. So when I come through and inspect it, I don't disturb it because I don't want to crack the, the coating. Right. So I'll just leave it. But a lot of people, you know, they'll pull it out. Oh, you know, that's, that's a bad thing. You know, actually, it's, it's a, an expandable plug that has now been encapsulated in a coating. And when you say it like that, eh, it doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> <laughs>